Welcome back to playing almost, what, six-year-old game and loving it more than anything out now. I'm your host, as usual, Bengal. We've got some new coach upgrades. That is for our offensive and defensive coordinator, not for the actual head coach, Bengus Khan, a.k.a. the Polka Dot Prince. And that's some unfortunate team news. We have some recruits that are scheduled to visit this week. And, um... A recruit that's ready to visit, but Matt Gibson locking us out. If he's who I think he is, that's going to suck. We take on another direction of the FCS compass this week. That is the FCS Northwest Predators. Kind of a sick name and logo, not going to lie. All right, Anthony Wright, Ray Britton visiting campus this week. Matt Gibson. Wow, we are really behind on him, huh? Oh, I think Derek Higgins was the guy we really wanted. Like, Matt Gibson's good. Don't get me wrong. Derek Higgins is the guy. We looked at him last week, and he was pretty sick. 91 speed, 81 zone. I'm down with that. I really am. Dude, I still want Pete Riley. With a passion. Come on, Pete. We're going all in. It's going to be... Uh, no, there's no point. We can't, we can't get him. We can't get Pete Riley. We're going to have to duck out of that one. I almost... I, I wanted to. I really did. Is Doug Denman even that good, dude? Let's see. He's a four-star recruit. Let's check out. Are you that good? You are... Oh. Go to wherever else. Who wants you? Go to Kansas. Whatever. I'm out. What about Ben Hubbard? How good are you? Lord... I just, I don't really care for that too much. I'm going to be honest. All right, Donnell Mason. Another guy that looks exactly like his name. He's also not good. I don't like that. I have a feeling about Marvin East, though. And we're not even, we're not even close. Okay. So, Ray Britton. This is the guy that's visiting our campus this week. And we haven't even looked at him really at all. He's not... He's not what you'd, you'd call good I wouldn't, I wouldn't refer to him as a good player. And we're so far out on Jeff Hurd. I don't think there's any chance we can get him. We're not missing out on that much, to be honest. He's like, okay. This class was really just about the offensive lineman. Chris Brown. Looking like he did after Rihanna. He's going down. A lot of people saying he's not as good. We're still in the lead on him, and like he's going to be one of the better offensive linemen on our team. Quentin Carter is a lot worse. Antonio Madison is a lot worse. Shannon Ball, a lot worse. Good lord, dude. Is anyone like actually as good as they're supposed to be? These tackles are disappointing. All right, Eddie Burgess. Decent. All right. We're going to make sure to keep him. We're going to up the points a little bit so Southern Miss doesn't steal him. Robert Walter, not bad. I am out on Bo Barnett now. He's down to a 61. If we get him, we get him, but I'm stopping the point dump. Joey Coker. Dude, these, these players are not, like, giving me much to work with here. I get that we suck. I guess, I guess that's why. Nick Olsen. He, like, he is worse than we thought he would be. But he's still pretty good. So we're going to up the points on him. What about Kendall Alford? Do we know anything about him? Not enough. Oh, wow. You're looking great. See old classic reverse gem. Imagine Steven Sims is just like a low-key beast. He's not. William Sullivan. Terrible zone. Decent speed, though, at free safety. We're just so far behind on him. And then Marvin East, we're so far behind. I don't know if we did scouting that well, which is unfortunate for us. It really is. We're going to fully scout Greg Fowkes. He looks like a running back. 92 trucking. 92 trucking? What about Trevor Tringan? 81 speed. High juke. High elusiveness. Decent spin. Decent pursuit. What position are you? You're like a uh, a linebacker, it looks like. 
Looks like Tringan's a decent linebacker. Do we want him? I mean, we might as well dump some points into him. Let's just scout Pete Riley. He's as good as they say he is. We'll throw some points in. I guess why not? He's visiting the school. And um, I guess we're not going to get the cutoff. There's something about the cutoff that you guys were mentioning in the comment section. I have no idea what it is now. But you did mention something. I can tell you that. All right. FCS Northwest. We are up to a 63 overall. This is a matchup that we can win. I'm going to change from the spread option. I didn't really care for that at all. I kind of want to go back to Texas. I liked Texas, dude. We're going to roll with it again. Another home game at dual field. The Predators are going to have no idea what hit them. We're getting back in the win column. Let's go. All right, we're going to kick. We don't want the ball first. I'm always kick, kick, kick. I do not care to receive first. I don't want to get the ball first and do damage. Just like, let's just see what they got, and we'll adapt accordingly. The fans are starting to show up in the stadium. I like it. This is improvement. Not to last week. Obviously, the Oklahoma game was packed. There are some fans in attendance, at least. Oh, it's... Oh, my goodness. What a good play call. What a good play call. Jeremy Bass with a five-yard rush. These are some pretty nice-looking helmets. I don't really know about the rest of the uni for the Predators, if I'm being honest. I like the helmets a lot. I think the, the jerseys are just a little bit too boring for my taste. All right, we kind of got to shut down this offense. Thought he was going to cut back. Like, we're... You know, around the same overall. And the sliders make it so they should be performing better. But, like, let's just have them not. Let's just stop them. That'd be fantastic. Oh, it's a pass. That was well designed. Blankenship lays the boom. But Justin King has the Predators inside the red zone. Anthony Johnson. Is that a rumble? Is that what he's doing in retirement? Former UFC fighter. He's now a, a white quarterback at an FCS school. Could be. Johnson has too much time. Dude, I'm spamming hit stick. Just hit him. Chris Holman with the touchdown. And that was just way too easy for FCS North Northwest. I, I cannot say FCS. I just can't. I always say FCS. And there's it's not a S. That's not a letter. That's not in between S and T. It's, Oh my god, are you kidding me, Chris Outlaw? As Pedro Goddard looks to get uh, it going again here. Very bad week last week because we had a completely different playbook. We weren't used to it. We still have the pistol in this one. We can still do our options. But we can actually go to our strength and be a passing offense. Alright, third down and four. We're dumping it off to the running back, Darren Maxwell. Power forward, we got the first down. I know his name is probably Duran, but I think we're going to keep calling him Darren because I've been doing that since episode one. No one's commented about it because, I, you know, I can pronounce any of these names however I want. They're made up names or made up characters. I can say, oh, yeah, he pronounces his name this way as Goddard finds Muller with a weird spin move of dreams and Ryan Muller's off to the races. Go, Ryan. 65 yards. And we are back in the Texas offense and performing well. Texas is back in the form of the Ozark State Outlaws. All right, second and nine. I want to step up here and run. 
We're going to throw in a B, though. He's wide open. It's Ryan Muller. Is that a pass from Kedrick Cunningham? Did I not notice him going into the game? No, it is, of course, Pedro Goddard. 5 for 5, 96 yards and a touchdown. What a good opening drive for the Ozark State Outlaw offense. Love to see it. We're all tied up at home at Dual Field, the saloon. And we're ready for a showdown. That's a draw. There we go. We saw it. Oh, it didn't help that I noticed it at all. Because what is that? Loren Marshall? Yep. 17 yards. The hole just opened up wide. Montreal Gardner got blocked. And then it was just, you know, running through the hole. Fighting through the tackle. I don't know why Montreal Gardner is acting like a deep safety. That is the absolute last person I'd want in that role. But Gardner! One-on-one -on -one wraps up. Sure, it's a three-yard game. But you know what? We pl we're playing with heart. That's what it is. Oh, that's a, that's a speed option. Watts with a huge hit. Jeremy Bass wears it. He's going to be back in the pond after that one. We got called 45. Nash! What a tackle! As John Oliver, host of some late night show, goes down. Field goal is up and good. SCS Northwest will take the lead after the field goal. 10-7, to seven, which is coincidentally the same score of the Texas State Bobcats over the Louisiana Raging Cajuns. I usually call them the Louisiana Lafayette Raging Cajuns, so that sounded super weird that I just left off the Lafayette. But we're going to roll out with Pedro Goddard. Feels good to do that again. These design runs are fun, but there's nothing like a good scramble. Third and 20 after the sack. We're facing pressure. Throwing for Timmons. And Gabriel Timmons, the backup tight end, is unbelievably good. This guy performs in week in, week out. He has the first touchdown in outlaw history. And here he is with a huge completion. A huge catch, I should say. The completion uh, on the attempt from Pedro Goddard. To keep him perfect on the day. And here's Maxwell. Still can't really find much. This triple option is going to work to perfection. And there it is. There it is. And there's the pitch. Oh, that worked out horribly. Cody's got it anyway. It worked out in the end. All right. We got it. That is underthrown badly. And it's off the hands of Gabriel Timmons. I just talked you up so much. And you're going to go and drop it. Come on. The classic Goddard scramble. Throw to the true freshman, Roland Francisco. Moving the chains. All right, third and five. Need a big completion here. And that could be it. Goddard over the top to Jake Rodriguez, the starting tight end with a huge catch. Dropped in the bucket by Pedro Goddard. I'm voting for Pedro. He will be the Heisman winner. There's Goddard. We're rolling out again. We've got room. Pedro Goddard. We, gotta, we just got to chill for a minute. He's out of stamina. We're still rolling out, though. Goddard. He's, a, he's in there. Walking in for the touchdown. Hesitated for a bit. Not sure if he was going to make that play with Pedro being so low on stamina. But we are going to take the lead. Two good drives for the Ozark offense. And it is 14-10. Outlaws. All right, Colt Nash, come on. Colt 45, stay firing. Don't be playing drunk. Oh my goodness, what a play. That's Blankenship, the free safety with the deflection. That was not Blankenship with the deflection. That was Baker. Someone made it. It doesn't matter. It kind of matters. All right. Third and five. Big stop. Come on. Johnson trying to take off. Nowhere to go. Except for going down in the backfield. Lightning McQueen. ka -chow. They're not going. Are you kidding me? It's a deep field goal. You got to be out of your mind. What's to the wind looking like? No way. No way. That's so wide. He had the distance, though. I think that could have gone in. Third down and nine. We have an open man. It's a tight end, Jake Rodriguez. First down. This offense is doing very well today. How about this one? How about this? Gabriel Timmons down the seam. Touchdown. Let's go. He makes up for his earlier drop. And Gabriel Timmons, the angel, into the end zone for the touchdown. 
Pitch outside to Marshall. We just don't have the speed to match. They can do that every time. Third and one, big stop here. Oh, it's a fullback handoff, but a big hit from Fisher. Where's Bass? They weren't work together so well. Oliver picks up the first down regardless. Minute 30 to go here in the first half. Third down and two. That's a big stop by Montreal Gardner. We're calling a timeout. We're getting the football back and we are scoring. We're blowing out the Predators. Does that make us the aliens? How do you have negative one turnovers? They only have five yards. That's Pedro Goddard is the team. The, the only other offense that it would be is the running back, Darren Maxwell, just running the ball. And that's not our focus. We're going to throw it to him, though. And he's got it! Darren Maxwell over the top with a huge gain. Pedro Goddard again, once again. Dropping that in a bucket right to only where Darren Maxwell could catch it. 30 seconds to go here in the second quarter. Rolling out. Scrambling. Pedro Goddard. First down. Let's call hurry up. Third and seven. That's open. And a great ball by Goddard. And it's dropped by Ryan Muller. It is a 46-yard field goal. It's hittable for sure. Kick is up. And... It was short anyways. I guess we actually should have trusted the coach there and tried for the end zone. Here's Outlaw. He's got some room. Ah, I really wanted a block there. Chris Outlaw though, 51 yards on the return. That's incredible. That's wide open in the flat. It's Darren Maxwell going for the hurdle. Over the middle, complete to Roland Francisco. Gets a good block. Francisco has good wheels. Francisco finds the end zone. 30 yards to the house. Swerving and finding the space, finding the end zone again. I can't believe it. Rolling out with Pedro Goddard. Finding Francisco over the middle. And just with the help of good blocks and good spacing on the field with the routes, Roland Francisco just gets in there. We're extending the lead even more. It'll be 28-10 outlaws over the Predators. It's a screen. Johnson going to take it himself. And he's just got good wheels. I got to just let the CPU tackle. And the ball's on the ground. Picked up by Wilkerson. I don't, I can't even fathom what has happened here. Oh, man. Who forced the fumble? It's Antoine Watts. What a play by the safety. And I threw it right back. I thought he was on a wheel. I was mistaken. Oh, wow. That's so unfortunate. If he was on a wheel there, look how wide open he would have been. But he just cut right back across. I don't know why I thought he was on a wheel. My bad. Second and goal. Oh, wow. What a great fullback or fake fullback dive. Halfback pitch. Loren Marshall gets a touchdown. That was almost a great play, but they faked us out. Second and four. Get out there, Goddard. Let's go. Pedro Goddard. Huge gain. We didn't really have a lot of options there. Force a pass or roll out and try to scramble for it. And it worked out real well. Jake Rodriguez caught it. Moving the chains. Had to switch on there to make that catch. Otherwise, who knows what could happen. That botched handoff is going to screw us over big time. Really is. But I now know how to kick field goals a little bit. I'm no expert. We're getting better. Wish I didn't have to settle for the field goal. But it will be 31-17. A pretty good lead here over the Predators. We'll have to hold that into the fourth quarter. Coming up next. Second and five. Handoff to Bass. He's a slippery fish, huh? another read option it's a triple option and the ball's on the ground picked up by Fisher we reeled in that pass that's not who fumbled it was Anthony Johnson third and 13 running the ball has not been effective and I want to go to B but I don't think he has the arm Ryan Muller catches it it's just when you have a noodle sometimes it's really hard to want to throw 
those sideline routes because they're underthrown a lot. I'm surprised that cut complete to Ryan Muller, if I'm being honest. Second and two, Maxwell. It's actually Cody this time. Riley Cody, the bowling ball. Short and fat. I love it. Just rolling over the pins. It's Cody again. Up the middle. Touchdown, Riley Cody. Honestly, didn't expect to ever say that over the course of this season. But there it is. Get after Johnson. Unfortunately, picks up 13. This game may as well be in the books, though. To screen. We're over it with Montreal Gardner. Would have loved a pick there. Oh, it's another screen. Didn't read that one as well. Nevertheless, the result is the same. Almost the same. It's another screen. This time it's an interception. Easy reads. The giving tree. Montrell Gardner with a user pick. There it is. Fool me once. You didn't really fool me. Fool me twice. Shame on me because you, you did fool me. And then he ran it a third time. Are you kidding me? Can't get fooled again. Third and five. We have time this time. And tried to step up and got sacked. That's uh, unfortunate. One of my favorite words. Field goal is good, though. And the silver lining, I guess. Even though we have not been able to convert on opportunities all game. I guess two field goals, but still. That's got to be an interception. Dude, Antoine Watts disappoints me with his ball skills, I will say. Great tackler. Great tackler. I don't... He never makes these interceptions. It seems so easy. Oh, and it's picked off by Outlaw. The Outlaw with an interception. And that is the dagger. And that is your ball game. The Ozark State Outlaws defeat the FCS Northwest Predators 41-17. And we are back to winning ways. This one wasn't nearly as close as it was against the Howlers with the exact same sliders. Just the Howlers were a tougher team for us as a stylistic matchup. But we're back in the Texas offense. I love the Texas offense. And we're back to winning ways, as I said, via that playbook. So, this was a great game. Let's go ahead and check over the stats. Checking out the stats now. Pedro Goddard, he's back to being a beast. 372 through the air, three touchdowns, one interception. That was dumb, my fault. Darren Maxwell, 13 attempts, 5.9 on the ground, no touchdowns. But Riley Cody got one. He was a beast. Darren Maxwell also led our team in receiving as far as catches goes. But Ryan Muller, three catches, 122 and a touchdown. Big game for him. Offensive line was okay for the most part. And Antoine Watts racking up tackles per usual. A sack for Lightning McQueen. ka -chow! Interceptions for Chris Outlaw. And Montrell Gardner, a senior and a sophomore. Flip that order. No defensive touchdowns as far as I can remember. Montrell Gardner was stopped just short. Week 7, we have a bye. And then week 8, we face the Troy Trojans at Troy. Let's go ahead and advance to the bye week. Do what we need to do there, which is recruiting stuff only. And then uh, we'll see what the Troy Trojans have in store for us in the next episode. So we've been locked out by Mad Gibson. We knew that. And um, we've been locked out by a lot, actually. But the players that I really do want are ready to visit. Derek Higgins, need him. Ryan Harris, need him. So those are the big news. We have a huge lead now in Shelton Neal. And he's a good player. And we're taking him away from big schools in TCU, LSU, Texas. Let's scout the rest of them. 68 overall. He's well-rounded. Good speed for a defensive tackle. I'll take that. Ryan Harris. Lead over UCF with him. Scout him completely. 69 overall. Nice. He's okay. Got the lead here on another Darren. This one's definitely Darren, I can promise you. <laughs> He's a four-star running back out of New Orleans, Louisiana. Looks pretty good, honestly. Good juke. 
He's got good speed, maybe. Could excel for sure. And he's a power style back, so that juke is pretty good. Can't see his truck. It says D trucking. He's a power back. What do you mean? Let's offer him a scholarship. Got the lead now on Derek Higgins. That's awesome to see. Let's go ahead and fully scout him. 73 overall. 85 man, 81 zone, 91 speed, 91 excel. This is a really, really good player. We have to uh, schedule a visit here. Is that what we do? Let's schedule when like we're going to get a, a win. We have a lot of bye weeks here. Texas State. These are tough matchups, man. You're supposed to schedule the visits as late as possible, right? Is that how that works? I don't know. I don't want to schedule it too late. Let's go against Texas State. Where uh, we're only losing points on Matt Gibson as a competitive visit. Because Matt Gibson is not even considering us anymore, yet still visiting for some reason. Dude, we're going to have no kicker if we don't go after Pete Riley. We like we need to get him. We're not going to be able to. It's, a wa it's such a big waste of points. It really is. Yeah, there's just no way we can get him. But we don't have a kicker. Who kicks next year if it's not him? That's the big problem. We're going to offer Eddie Burgess a scholarship. Up the points on him as well. Doesn't really even matter how good he is at this point. I'd like to know. 68. Uh, better than what we have. But uh, we needed to offer him a scholarship. Chris Brown as well. Nick Olson as well. And I think we are in business now. This is going to be a tight race for Falks. Folks. Did I just... I think I decided. I can't remember what I decided. Can we schedule a visit for you? Are you all already scheduled to visit? He is. Okay. Week 14. I feel like that's a pretty good spot for us. It's only between that and Minnesota. If Minnesota loses week 13, I think that'd be pretty big. But that is going to do it for this episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed had a lot of fun here. It's a lot more fun to win than it is to lose. I'll tell you that much. And hopefully next week we can beat the Troy Trojans. Continue the winning streak. Right now we are 2-3. and three. Honestly, not terrible for a first year program at all. The two wins have been pretty tough. Or one of them was over the Howlers. And we've only beaten FCS schools. I understand your, your worry with that. But you know what? Eventually we're going to beat an FBS school. Maybe Troy is the week. Who knows? But again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.